You guys, iOS 5 just came out and it's pretty cool. So we're gonna take a look at all the new features that you can expect when you get to install it on your iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad. iOS 5 looks about the same as iOS 4 for the most part, although on your home screen you'll have notifications now. And you have this wonderful notifications drop down. So you can check your email, see what apps are bugging you about certain things and uh, and and what appointments you have etc so everything will show up there except when you tell it you still want those annoying little pop-ups which you can do by going into settings and then going to notifications and you'll see all you have your apps in here and then you just basically type on an app or tap on an app and you can choose between no alerts, banner alerts, which are the ones that show up in here, and when you get one, it shows up on the top for a little bit, and then regular alerts, which are the ones that we've all come to hate. iOS 5 brings a couple of things that people have been really looking forward to, and those are iCloud and iTunes Match. iTunes Match will let you download your music directly onto your device if it was on another device, and it will match songs in your iTunes library if they're uh, if you've bought them before, rip them from a CD, so that way you'll get iTunes copies as well, and you can listen to them from anything. But it just syncs, so. If you want to turn on iCloud and all of that stuff, you just need to go to your settings and choose iCloud, and choose what you want to sync. And you can sync everything from your photo stream to bookmarks to reminders to calendars, contacts, mail, notes, documents, and data, and you also can have it set up to find your iPhone. You get five gigabytes of storage for free. I apparently have 1.4 gigabytes available, I don't know what's in there really, but you can buy more storage. And it's relatively inexpensive, I mean you get 10 gigabytes for 20 bucks a year, and all the way up to 50 gigabytes for $100 a year. Uh, I'm not sure how you're going to fill all of that up with a 32 gigabyte device, but I suppose if you had an iPad or something. Anyway, you have more storage options, and iCloud is pretty easy to set up, you just basically sign up for an account and log in. And if you already have an account, you can use that one instead. All you really need to know about the iMessage app is it's the same as your text message app, only it runs on iPads and iPod Touches as well, so you can send messages to your friends who are not necessarily paying out their butts for an AT&T or Verizon contract to use an iPhone. So that's pretty cool, or not, depending on whether or not you care. Now forced onto your home screen is the wonderful or not wonderful newsstand and when you tap that you get uh, a shelf with all the possible magazines you have bought and if you like magazines digital magazines for your phone or your iPad or whatever then that's great otherwise that's going to be another icon you cannot hide or get rid of so another new feature of iOS is the reminders app and Apple's just added that as another mandatory app you have to have on your home screen or on a folder somewhere. But if you are looking for a reminders app that will sync with all your other stuff and you don't want to use the calendar for that for some reason, you can add reminders by just typing them in a list like you would on a sheet of text. And then you'll have, you, you can see you have the list here. And uh, you can list them by date. If they don't have a date, they just show up right there. And you can see your reminders are completed, you can search them, etc. Um, and you can assign basically when you want to be reminded through an alert of some kind, uh, the priority and any notes you want to add to it. And then when you're done, you just check it off and then it's done. So that's reminders. iOS 5 now has Twitter baked right into it. You'll see if you go into your settings app that there's a Twitter section. You can go in there and just sign in using your Twitter username and password. This isn't going to be a huge integration outside of the main app immediately, but you'll be able to use it with other third-party apps as developers start integrating the feature. The camera app is now supposedly a bit faster and also has a grid mode for composition. That's about it. There are also some additions to your photo library. I have a lot of screenshots here, so we'll take this one. This one looks like a picture. There we go. Hi, Wing. Um, and you can actually do some editing with your photos so I'm just going to tap that and you can see there's play and the airplay and then there's this edit button here which brings up some other options this is a no red eye where you just basically tap the eyes wings eyes aren't red so it's not really necessary um, then you also have this enhance button which will let you auto enhance the photo 
can really do a whole lot there. And you can crop how you like as well by just dragging the corners to crop the area that you want. And there you go. Safari has a couple of new additions to it. On an iPad, you would actually be able to see your browsing with tabs instead of going to this screen. Um, but if you wanted to take a web page for further reading, let's say this article on, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, you tap Reader and it will convert it into a more readable format in which you can easily adjust the text size for your eyes. Some good news when you're composing something in mail, if for whatever reason you want to actually alter the text here, you just click that arrow and you can see there's bold, italics, and underline. You can also look it up and adjust the quote level in your message. So I'm just going to make this bold and italic and underline it. In your calendar you actually have um, some new views. In the iPhone there is a, a uh, no, a month, day, and list view option, and then on the uh, iPad you can now see your year ahead. We can't demo this because this is an iPhone 4, but if you have an iDevice that's an iPad 2 or later, you will be able to do AirPlay mirroring, meaning you can take what's on your screen, and whatever you do on your screen will be mirrored on any AirPlay compatible video device, like an Apple TV for example which opens up some interesting possibilities for gaming and other things. The iPad also comes with some new multitask gestures. You can't use them on the iPhone because imagine using four fingers to swipe anything. You're pretty much maximizing the amount of space on the screen. It wouldn't work very well. But the iPad can use those gestures to bring up the multitask bar, for example. So if you swipe up with four or five fingers, that'll get you there. All right, that's all we've got, so enjoy.